who has the worst fan base, Coolio, he decided to stage dive at a concert, none of his fans caught him, he hit the ground, they robbed his jewelry, and one shoe, that's sad. L. Ron Hubbard, you gonna have to lawyer up for that comment son, I mean. Seafy fans take it too far sometimes. No mentions of blood on the dancer floor, I heard their fan is a total prick, in all seriousness, a lot of them shame victims of Davy vanity and deny the allegations, that he's molested slash red preteen girls, which he has, and it's been collectively proven. Not Star Wars, I can guarantee that, they're wonderful, cheers, Peter Mayhew. Alex from Target, his girlfriend is getting death threats, who isn't nowadays, I missed the Alex train I googled him and all I can find, is that he is an attractive looking guy who became famous for being cute, that's all there is to it. Whenever I was on Twitter it was One Direction, I don't know, if they're as bad now, but you could write a single tweet saying something bad about them without at least 10 wishing for your slow and painful death. Death threats from children are hilarious, especially in person. You get tears in your eyes from laughing so hard. I mean, really, what are they going to do? Swing their jan sport at you. One time I was attacked by, like, five toddlers. Chess scary yo. No one is meaner to One Direction members than One Direction fans. They criticize their girlfriends and their family members. They call them gay and pair them with each other, and then get upset at the members for being upset about being called gay. This is just on Twitter. A member was called gay by a magazine, and was vocally upset about it. The fans, you're acting kind of homophobic. By being upset at being called gay, you could be more supportive of your gay fans, and be handling this a little better, they're fine insane. Same for Justin Bieber fans, they literally vow to murder Drake Bell every single day. Justin Bieber, I once tweeted a joke about Justin Bieber, didn't tag him or anything, just said a joke, that included the words Justin Bieber. For the next two weeks, I received the most vile hate tweets I'd ever seen. Thank God Bieber decided to be a singer. If he ever decided to become an evil dictator, he'd be unstoppable. The Chive. Keep calm and shut the F up about your mediocre fodder blog. The Chive is how I discovered Reddit. People kept posting about how The Chive was just stealing stuff right off of Reddit. So I was like WTF is this Reddit? And now I was countless hours on Reddit. You were Reddit. I don't get The Chive. I really really don't. It offers nothing to set it apart from any of the thousand other time wasting websites just like it. But its users think it's literally the best thing on earth. They're so cult like. I always thought it was an onion sister site. Viners. Black people be like. White people have names like Lenny. While black people have names like Carl. When I'm with my boyfriend. Eeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeee
I knew a woman who said she was a little girl, and she was standing on a street corner waiting for her mom. And around the corner Ringo comes running with this terrified look on his face being chased by a pack of screaming girls. Another one about Ringo. The group was at a party held in their honor and a woman walked up to Ringo with scissors and cut a lock of his hair off. Ringo was like, what the hell are you doing? And the woman just laughed it off and walked away. Isis. But, but, Oceanic is the best album ever, I have an Isis band t-shirt which I absolutely love design looks great, it's super comfortable, and it's a perfect fit, now I feel completely uncomfortable wearing it in public, oh man, it must suck for them, why couldn't Isis, nay I saw, it's etc, be called something more derived, like Islamic Caliphate Paradise, I, or Fleetwood Mac, this might be the most objectively correct answer here, I mean, op did capitalize worst. Galatasaray, F in hell, it's what I imagined the Colosseum was in ancient Rome, but add flares and smokabums. There was a comment here, it's gone now, I've seen one episode of Supernatural, at some point I'll come back to watch it, I've seen every episode of Sherlock, I enjoy it, I've seen all of Doctor Who since it started up again in 2005 except for most of this year's episodes. I really like this show. I don't understand why people combine these shows. Sherlock and who share a writer and a production company. Supernatural has nothing to do with them. I can see making silly jokes involving the three fan bases but nothing more than that. It sucks because all of these are genuinely good shows, but combine all three into a single entity and the fans are insufferable. They care more about the fandom than the show. I also get annoyed at people who are so obsessed with the fandom, that they end up having a hard time distinguishing fanon and canon. They'll watch an episode, and say things like, this fanfic wrote it better, or they'll have sudden love, or hate for a character not based, of what the character has been written as on a show, but based off the giant amount of fanfics they've read. The middle aged women twilight fans, reverse the gender point creepy, no, it's still creepy. Charles Manson. I don't know why, but swastikas carved into foreheads really annoy me. Maybe they're all former Nazis, and they had that carved by Lieutenant Aldo Rain. Korea. I don't know why, but they are all scared of fans. Hey, my friend is Korean, and he had to watch as a fan killed his father. You know who has the worst fan base? My mom. Okay, muscle man. Please, we said worst, not largest. He said fan base, not vagina. We found Muscleman's reddit account guys. I like smoking weed, but dear god do I hate stoners and flower children. No one wants or needs to know that you smoke. 75% of the popular youtubers, you know who I'm talking about. The people who play the newest fat game with their face in the top corner screaming and making dick jokes every other sentence. I honestly don't understand how they got so popular. Well, I do, but I don't think it's funny at all. Most of them are the same too. There's not much originality there. Everyone just bandwagons along into the same stuff. But hey, they're making sh tons of money. So good for them. The only one I watch regularly is Sips. He's a chill dude, though I'm not sure how popular he is. I mean, he has over 1 million subscribers, but that's probably not enough to be among popular YouTubers. PewDiePie, Tibuscus, etc, etc. Yup, the only thing I quite enjoyed from Tabuscus were his literal game trailer videos. I attempted to watch some of his gamma play videos, but my god it isn't my type of video at all. Hitalia, is that a font? This, the fan base basically ruined Hitalia for me with that effing France red chibi England with his Eiffel Tower hon hon and baguetch. Hitalia kind of got boring after season 4 anyways. It's like the anim version of Pal and Ball. I, yes, I was a member of this fandom for a little, while well, a few years ago, way, way too many 13 year old girls who think they're so cute and funny for watching an him. the show's not bad, but really, fan base is such a turn off. Crossfit, Crossfit places a huge emphasis on form, and not needing it, Crossfit takes complicated movements, and gets rid of all the useless sh, like effectiveness and safety and replaces it with cool sh like violence and danger. Broshans. Crossfit is great, because you don't have to exercise for a goal. Exercise is the goal. No C part of it is improving your lungs. By talking about it all day, 
First rule of CrossFit. Talk about CrossFit and grind your rotator cuffs into dust. One of my favorite memories was when this one guy who did CrossFit and was the stereotypical doucher bag who wouldn't shut up about it came to one of my rowing team's land workouts. He started complaining about how easy our warm up was compared to his 10,000 push ups or whatever that we got on the ergs, rowing machines. At the end of our workout, the kid threw up twice and had one of the worst scores on the team. If the fan base gets big enough, you're gonna get some bad eggs. F I'm PewDiePie. He started disabling comments in his videos because he got tired of all the bullshit in his comments. You know their fan base is horrible when even the celebs don't like them. Roughly 1 in 220 people are subscribed to him. Okay that's a little terrifying. Ick now. I dislike his videos. But the dude caters to his target audience, and that works. Unfortunately that target audience is insufferable preteens. Sadly the guy himself is actually pretty cool as a human being. He just knows damn well why he is famous. Homestuck. The thing I love about this is that any other fandom would be like how f I dare you. Whereas Homestuck fans are like yeah, I know, we are absolute sh am Homestuck. Can confirm as worst fan base. Hitler, 1941 best year of life, hey, he was one hell of a baker, started animal rights, and he killed Hitler, got to count for something, brat yeah, but he was literally Hitler, that's gotta cost him some points. The shtai truth is that the upper, say, 5% of every fan base is effing insufferable, basically without variants, there's a refine guy out there that has like, broccoli t-shirts, broccoli posters, he has a refined broccoli keychain, and if you're like dude, I love broccoli too he'd say you had no idea what you were talking about, you like broccolini, what about broccoli rabe, I bet you've never even seen Chinese broccoli, I eat broccoli with every meal, I can make it 213 different ways, I have a refined broccoli garden in my backyard, that's the upper 5% of every fine interest group, I have no idea why people do this. Or how they've convinced themselves this suffices for an identity. But that seems to be the idea. For me, I'm not going to hole anything. I'm half assing all the things. Religiously, even. Guys, you don't have nearly as many fleeting interests as me. I've read like 85% of Wikipedia just for fun. You can't even touch my well roundedness. Thank you. So point you're going to hole at half assing things. 85%. He 85% AS at half assing. You put into words my experience with basically any hobby or life pursuit. It's pretty discouraging to grow in any endeavor when those more experienced are jerks about it. I'm getting better at realizing that either A. Those people are insecure or B. The hobby slash fandom is all they have. Life is much more than complete knowledge about any one thing. Except broccoli. But you wouldn't understand. Semi related XKCD. Man. That old text is fantastic. Also relevant XKCD. Supernatural. Oh my good god. Supernatural. Love the show. But my goodness you're correct. My girlfriend and I were at Comic Con a couple weeks ago. And we are big fans of the show. So we were pretty excited for the Supernatural panel. Waiting in line for the panel to begin. I had never felt so disconnected with a fan base before in my life. I love Supernatural for the kickass music, interesting monsters and lore, and the character development and interactions between Sam and Dean. All I heard from the many teen girls there, however, was all about Jensen's lips. Miss has eyes. Jard's body ug yes please. Like, holy sh, is that really the reason so many people watch this show? To make matters even worse. During the actual panel, they had the actors for Bobby, Crowley, Rufus, Abaddon, and some other guy I can't remember. They had fans line up to ask questions and I should not. At least half of the questions began with I've got a question about Sam and Dean. I understand they are the big stars of the show, but at least ask questions for, you know, the actors that were actually present. Mark Shefford, Crowley, did poke fun every time someone asked such a question, so that was rather amusing. Needless to say, that day was a real eye opener and I'll surely be distancing myself from this fan base as much as possible. TL, Doctor, Supernatural fans made me embarrassed to be a fan of the show. Which is a shame, because it really is a good show. I found one good thing about their fan base, though. Websites with very, very detailed lists of filming locations. 
TL. Doctor, I found a way to benefit from the crazy fandom. I was in Vancouver a couple weeks ago for a conference. A friend and I took a couple extra days there, because why the hell not? Not sure what to do with ourselves. We turned to those websites, picked a few spots around the city, and set off. As it turns out, the supernatural method is a fantastic way to explore a city, see sites familiar from the show, stumble upon other interesting things en route, get a little insight into how a show's crew changes a location to suit its needs. As an added bonus, watching certain episodes now is a little like looking through vacation pictures. There's that crazy huge yacht we made fun of, there's the lodge with the unbelievable grilled cheese sandwiches, that's where we sat, and eavesdropped on old Germans talking about the war. That's the bar where the handsome Irish bartender only charged me half price for my Johnny Walker Blue, because he didn't realize he couldn't bring it up as a double, so that was pretty cool. Man I'm so poor that, if I even think about Johnny Walker Blue, the bank sends someone to my house to slap me in the face. People into horse riding. My older sister never grew out of the elementary school horse loveness, and is still super into horses. She has made a career out of training them and teaching lessons, and will always sneak some sort of horse metaphor that I don't understand into our conversations. But the women she works with are even crazier. They refer to their horses as their boyfriends, and talk about how their horses are jealous when they ride other horses. I ride and that's weird. I love my horse like someone else loves their dog. The whole boyfriend thing is just, no, we all went to high school with that weird horse girl, the politically correct term is centaur, one girl at my high school, asked in biology, if humans could reproduce with horses, there's a huge difference between the weird horse girl from school and the obsessive horse people of real life, unless you go to a school with a big FFA slash 4H presence, then there's bound to be some overlap. The town I grew up in turned into a wealthy suburb of Atlanta when I was a child, and a lot of horse people moved in. I went to school with a lot of horse girls. The joke we told was that when you date a horse girl you are her third love. Always after her horse and her dad is money. Holy F. In college I had a weekly 3 hour lab, and I was partners with these two girls who were both really into horses. I did all the work, while I got to hear them never shut the F up about stupid effing horses. My wife is a horse person. She would rather Russ go without food than her horse. End of the month and we're short on cash. Better make sure the horses have enough hay instead of us having food. I couldn't live with a horse girl. There is only one correct answer and it's the Alabama Crimson Tide football fans. Amaze this wasn't the top comment. But then I realized I wasn't in r slash cfb. Flare up. I. Low hanging fruit. Hey Jerry. 2003 just called. And once it's easy target back. What's funny is. That this was my first thought as well. Except I've never met a Jigallo in real life. I only know about them via Reddit. I think I've been spending way too much time on this site. 